All right, all right. It's Tuesday night at seven o'clock central, and it is time for another weekly installment of Conversations with Commodores. And I so look forward to these every week. Coming out of Knox County, Farragut High School, Darren Rothenberg is our guest tonight. Darren, thank you, bud, for making some time for us. I'm looking forward to our chat. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to do it. I've enjoyed watching the, the ones I've been able to, to catch. And uh, I think it's great just to find out where everybody is and what they're doing. So it's great. You know, it, it really is. I love the, the camaraderie. I love meeting players from all different uh, decades, all different years. And I don't know if, if I, maybe you guys were teammates for a little bit, but when I say OJ Fleming, you say oh, yeah. what? Oh yeah, he was there with me, yeah, absolutely. I was gonna say, didn't you guys butt heads if he's playing a little tight end and maybe you're on the D-line? No, not us. No, I mean, we, I was, you know, I was mainly, um, you know, playing tackle and guard. And, you, I guess you'd, been, me a lot of you'd have been next to him, not defense. Uh, yeah, yeah. He was line. next to him. Probably, probably telling me, I'm, uh, you know, what my assignment was is what he's probably doing. <laughs> All right, OJ, it's your time to, so let's hear from you, bud. But <laughs> I'll tell you what he said in just a second. Darren, I, you came out of Knox County. You're in almost the shadows of Neyland Stadium. I realize that your high school is a good 30 minutes away or so. Yeah. But as a kid growing up in Orange Country, did you have any background, any family that who went there? What was any connections to the school? Or were they just on y'all's hate list from day one? <laughs> No, I mean, of course, you know, growing up, I, I, you know, my family is all from the north. So my dad went to Michigan State, uh, mom went to Defiance in Ohio. And, um, and so, uh, you know, didn't have a big strong allegiance to tell you. It was the team, it was the local team. And of course, as a kid, everybody, you know, cheered for him. And I went to games and, you know, enjoyed watching them and, and all that. Um, and really, you know, they recruited me uh, up until a certain point. Um, but back then there was, you know, it was, and they got a lot of heat for me. It was the time when they were asking a lot of people to, to walk on that were local. And, um, you know, I had great opportunities and I, you know, uh, wanted to get out of Knoxville a little bit. Um, you know, so, you know, there's, you know, I, there's a, there's a article that one of the reporters had to probably sealed my fate when I said, you know, my blood doesn't run orange. And it was, in a, you know, in a, to a, <laughs> so that uh, probably didn't no. help my, you know, my case back then, but, but no, I was excited to have the opportunity to, to go to Vanderbilt. Well, you know, you were two, about two years younger than Peyton Manning. Manning came to Tennessee, I guess at about 94. So you'd have been midway, you know, sophomore year in high school or so. Was he on the radar for Knox County, Knoxville yet? I mean, was he a big deal or was he becoming no, he was a big, he was a big deal. I remember going to you know he talked spoke at one of our one of the churches in Farragut, and we all went to see him. And you know, so no, he was a big deal then. We we knew uh, you know he was talented, and and uh, you know uh, obviously um, he was he was locally a really big deal. So, um, but yeah, well, I and got I, to play you know, got to play against. I didn't get to play against him, but um, you know. I remember the naked boot to to win the game for that he, that he had on us. So you know, uh, I, I was there on the sideline. Just couldn't you know, just knew it was going to happen too. Well, I I too became a Charles Woodson fan that season, <laughs> <laughs> and it was kind of ironic that Tennessee won the title with the year after yeah. Peyton leaves. But we don't talk about him no. or the orange any longer. When did you move to Tennessee? How old were you? Oh, I was young, a couple of weeks old, probably. My, my parents were teachers. Oh. My dad was a football coach, uh, coached um, in Michigan. And I think he was on the first, one of the first state championship when they first did the playoffs in, back in the 70s. He was one of the assistant coach up there. Coached with Emory Hale at Oak Ridge then. So he got a job down at Oak Ridge High School, which back then was the powerhouse in East Tennessee. And uh, he was assistant coach there. And then he had a family to support. Sport, so he got into, into other things and, and left the teaching and coaching. 
So you really did grow up in, in Knoxville. You grew up here. Yeah, I grew up. I mean, I would consider myself, you know, you know, pretty much born and raised. I mean, two weeks old in, in East Tennessee. So, well, Dan, we got a couple more Commodores who rolled in. We got Russell Nicole is with us. Oh yeah. And we got Dwayne Jones. Thank you guys for you coming guys. home. Darren, your high school has won countless state championships and one or two uh, football state championships. In fact, Parker Nolan, just a recent Vandy boy, Patrick Raby, a few others have all come through the baseball program at Vanderbilt right. from high school. How proud are the sports at Farragut High School? Extremely. I mean, you know, it, it's, um, you know, we, I don't think we had the best football reputation for a while, but, you know, from a baseball standpoint, I think it was the team of the, you know, Farragut High School was the team of the decade, I think, in the in the 2000s from ESPN. I mean, so, I mean, but there's a lot of pride in the co competition there is, it's crazy. I'm out with my kids and my son is uh, 11 years old, just trying to get into that baseball scene. It's unbelievably competitive, you know. Does he want you to move, do you want you to move back to Knox County? <laughs> they probably do, but I'm not going back. I got out to the country. I love it. So I moved out. And I love that. I love that. Amen. Yeah. Uh, speak, uh, speaking of a hard hitter, Jamie Winborn's in the house. Hey, Jamie, thanks absolutely. for joining us, but, um, absolutely. We, he gave me a few headaches for sure. I think Jamie gave a whole bunch of folks headaches, not just in we coming out of Wetumpka, but also at, at Vanderbilt and in the pros, that's for sure. I got him good one time though. I think there's an article. He, he, he mentioned an article one time. I think I got him, caught him on a, some type of misdirection play and 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 one of my the, one of the few times that I may have uh, may have gotten him got an advantage on him well he uh, I'm, I'm glad he's with us he he came on the show a while back we had a great great conversation Darren let's let's head into to your high school years and you know, it's not like you're a diminutive small guy. You you, you don't really blend in the hallways of your high school. And, and I suspect that maybe at a young age, you kind of wanted to play high school football. I know with your dad being such a successful coach, but at what age did it become the reality to you that, man, I can play at the next level. I, I want to play on Sundays. I want to explore that. Yeah, you know, I think it was probably my eighth grade, eighth or ninth grade. I'm trying to remember, but it wasn't, I mean, I, I you know, I wasn't the biggest up until probably my junior year in high school. I was pretty undersized, which kind of held me back. I was young too. So, I mean, I graduated at 17. I was, you know, turned 18 right before I got into school. So I was young. I wish I had another year to, to really grow because that's when I really grew was that summer between my, you know, senior year and, and, and starting at Vanderbilt. But, um, yeah, you know, there was a, a Bobby Scott, a big, you know, obviously Tennessee guy, but his son was the quarterback for our team. And he came up to me when the eighth or ninth grade and said, you know, looked at me and said, hey, you can you can play at the next level if you work and do these, do the right things and stay out of, you know, all these things. And that was the first, you know, my dad's told me, but, you know, you, you, you know, like I, my son, I know with my son now, he doesn't believe everything I tell him either. So, you know, but um you know, he told me you could do it. And, and so really it was him, you know, that, you know, that, that really kind of puts it, you know, planted the seed, you know, to say, Hey, I could do that. You know, I could, I could, I could get there. Was, was your dad coaching at a different high school when you came through Farragut? No, he had stopped coaching by then. And he was, um, he was, uh, into his, into the business world and, and, uh, and uh, and so he wasn't coaching, but, you know, always, you know, he, he was great because it, it wasn't like he was always trying to shove things down my throat or tell me, th you know, he, he, if I wanted to know something, I had a question, he was there, uh, but he wasn't one of those over, you know, you know, helicopter dad that was just trying to, you know, tell me what to do all the time or overcoach me. He's let my, he let my coaches coach at the high school and if I had a question, he would, you know, you know, he might help me. You know, that's, it's so refreshing to hear because I could see where, He's no longer professionally coaching, but he has in his own house a player. And, you know, once you're a coach, you've always got that in your, your system on some level. Sure. It's like any profession that you have done for a long, long time. 
not just coaching, it could be being a doctor or an architect or whatever it is, you want to share some of your, your knowledge, your, your experience. Right. But uh, having him there as a, at your fingertips, so to speak, I bet was, was a real asset to you. It's probably really, really good for you both. Absolutely. No, it was. You know, it's, but it is on a, on a side note, it, it, and I'm as guilty as anybody. It took me quite a number of years to realize I'm just dad. I'm no longer the former football player. I no longer have any expertise because I certainly never played lacrosse. And my daughter, who ended up playing in lacrosse mm -hmm. uh, in college, about eighth grade is just looking at me like, I think it's time to let the coaches right. do the coaching. And that's that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. Jamie says, Big Roth, a lot of battles at practice says to tell you hello. <laughs> OJ. Awesome. Oh, OJ wants to know at what year did the hair on top of your head migrate <laughs> to the south onto your face? You know, I'm let you take I made that. that I made a decision this year, actually. It was this year that I said, I'm, you know, I, I just I, the look, I think if, if I'm going up, I might as well just get rid of it all, you know, and, and try to intimidate some people at work, you know, that's, that's what I thought I'd try to do. I've always thought, and this is a side note to a side note, I always thought it would be hilarious for a dad who had a, a whole head of hair and, and no beard, but then grew this, you know, flipped it one, I know you can't just <laughs> make this appear, and then just show up and the whole family's like, where'd he go? Oh, but Jamie does say you're looking really, really good. And we got Tom Fitz, number seven, is in the house. One of my teammates from back in the day. Hey, cool. Tom. Guys, we're talking with Darren Rothenberg, and we we stole him out of Knox County in the fall of 96. Who else was recruiting you? Did you consider other schools? Yeah, uh, I really and, thought and I was – that a tough decision? Yeah, I really thought, you know, Penn State was recruiting me pretty heavily and um, went up there for a visit. Um, and, you know, really just, uh, you know, had some of the academy, some of the, the service academies, um, that was my best recollection. I mean, there was, I think I was, you know, lightly recruited from some others, but really it was Vanderbilt that was from, even from, I remember getting letters from before Dauer from, um, um, oh man, that's terrible. Denardo? Yeah, Denardo. Sorry, Denardo. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so they'd always recruit me. I was always a you know you know great student, and that was important to me. Um, and then I just had a great built a great relationship with Steve Franks. I think I was Steve Franks' first recruit when he was when he took over that role there. Um, and uh, you know, I had a great visit out there. <laughs> so, and uh, that was, I think, uh, High Lewis was running the show for the some of the some of the recruits that were coming in. And it was a, it was a great time, and and uh, I just felt at home there. And you know, uh, Sean Wilson, you know, showed me around on my on my official visit at Vanderbilt. But um, you know, really, I, I decided early. I wanted it over with, so I decided before my senior year and committed early. I think, I, like I said, I was the first recruit, and uh, for that for that year and you know we just was ready to get that process over and I was excited you know to well, it probably put a big relief on you didn't it oh yeah yeah I didn't want to be dealing with it through the season I wanted to enjoy we had a we had probably the best team that Terry had had up to that point mm -hmm. um and we had you know I wanted to focus all on that you know that season and um and have that out of the way and really felt comfortable with the decision I mean you know uh, Penn State they they had a, a guy locally that they took over over me and and uh, um, and then you know and at that point I was just hey you know I'm I don't need to wait uh, of course they, a couple came back to me after I committed later in the season but I was you know that was when it was important I thought you know I'm not I made a commitment I'm sticking with it that, and that's just who I am I mean that's my word I'm not you know even if there was another opportunity so you know that's I don't mean to put an age on you but that was twenty six years ago and back then without social media without the instant gratification world that we live in now without the transfer portal without all the announcements 
And maybe it happened and it just wasn't on my radar. I wasn't aware when you made that commitment, you didn't see a lot of flipping. Right. Maybe you did. And, and I was just not, I'm naive about it. But yeah, there was, Darren, I know for some, it's kind of a, um, a feather in their cap, if you will, to be an early commitment when you're just a junior or just starting your senior year. But during that year, from what I just heard you say, you were satisfied with your commitment. The Johnny come latelys were too late. You, you had made your decision. But did at any time, did you waffle at all? Did you entertain conversations with coaches or, or take visits elsewhere? No, I didn't. Um, I really was, you know, that, that was, I mean, it was my, you know, my word was who I was. I was who, you know, mm -hmm. you know, it was that important that, you know, if I made a commitment, you know, if, if it's not a commitment, if you're going to go check other places or go talk to other people, or, I mean, true. so, you Very know, true. I mean, it's, that's just the way I felt back then. I probably would encourage probably maybe not that, that to, I don't know. I mean, it just depends on the situation and everybody's, yeah. you know, what everybody's comfortable with and, you know, in their situation. I can't, you know, it's, that's why it's, you know, it's not maybe for everybody, but that's the way I felt about it, you know, and even in school, it's the way I felt about it when, you know, things were rough, you know, I, I, I just think it's, I think everybody's got a role to play on a team mm -hmm. and some people can't accept some of the roles that they have sometimes, you know, I had an well, up and we, down career. You're, you're, you're right. Because most of us are a big fish in a little pond growing up in our, in our high school. And everybody's a little fish when you go to D1 SEC school. Now, had you gone to Vanderbilt games? Had you seen them play either in Knoxville or in, in Nashville? Uh, no, I had not. Um, I went to the, the one game that I saw was not a great one. It was against Arkansas the year before at home. I think we lost 58 to nothing or something like that. Oof. When you were, so it was maybe pretty brutal. Um, it was pretty brutal, but you know, uh, you know, but, but I just, it, I, it was just the, the, the opportunity, the, the 40 year plan they talk about now, which wasn't really talked about then, but that was the thought process even then. And, um, and, you know, just, you know, the guy, I mean, the team, the, the, my teammates there, I mean, that was, it was the, you know, that whole experience. So, um, you know. Who did you room with your freshman year? Brian Gruber. And where did you guys, where were freshmen living in 90s? We were in Branscombe. We were, okay, so we were still in there. That's, I was 10 years ahead of you and that's where we were living. We lived on, I lived on Lupton three. So I didn't know yeah, if you guys I remember. Were. I think we were on the six. Fifth or sixth floor, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, uh, I met Brian. I met I met, met Groob on our visit, on our uh, official visit. Mm -hmm. um, man, we just we hit it off, had a great time, and you know, really, it was like I didn't want a room with. I just I knew him. I knew I thought we'd get along, so I called him the summer we were going in. I said, "Hey, I'm going to put you down as my roommate if you're cool mm -hmm. with that." And he was like, "Yeah, let's do it." So, man, y'all had a choice. We were told uh, well, who we were rooming with. And six weeks yeah. into six weeks into the semester, a whole bunch of us swap roommates. It was it was bizarre. We still we lived next door to each other, but we just swapped rooms. So anyway, yeah, yeah, that <laughs> um, was a rough, and that was a rough year. There was a lot, you know, um, that was a rough year. I mean, it was, you know, with uh, with Kyle and 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 uh, and all the that went on that year. It was it was rough. I mean, it was it was rough. But well, I, and and I don't mean to get too deep into that, but the fall of 96, for those, we've got Commodores from all different years watching. I, I want you to just tell some of the little bit about what happened that year, Darren, that, that made, I mean, you're a freshman in college. Now granted, you're only a few hours from home, but you're trying to deal with academics, athletics, social, and then this occurred. Right. So kind of share a little bit of what happened. You know, um, it was just an unfortunate situation. I mean, you know, we were, it was, it was after we just gotten back from spring break, we we're starting. Um, and, uh, you know, we were all on spring break together and, and then, you know, just, uh, just an unfortunate situation that really we can't even explain. I mean, there was, there's been a lot, I know there was a loss, you know, things that went on, but really it just, I mean, it was just a, 
devastating situation for our team when 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 he passed away. And you know, it it, it I think it it you know it, it tightened us as as a group, but it was it was it was brutal. I mean, you know, and and everything reminded you of him. He was such a great. Mm-hmm. Just a great guy, you know. Well, we and we've had others on the show who've been pretty specific about what happened, and I'm not asking you to go there. Yeah. Talk about you just mentioned that it it tightened either your class or the team as as a whole. Yeah. Did the coaches play a part in that, or were the the leaders within the team? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. That? Everybody. Everybody played a part in it. I mean, you know, he, you know, it, it was just unfortunate because you know he he had such a bright future. I mean, and he tore his ACL in in camp. Like we were just in like the first day or two of camp without even pads on. He's running through bags and tears his ACL. You know, um, and it was just coming back from that and ready to go into, you know, you know, and going into spring ball and all that. So, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, the, the whole everybody. I mean. It was it was handled in a great way. I mean, our, our coaches gave us gave us room to do we need to took us down there, you know, to the services and and um, and all that. And it was you know so I mean they 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 supported us and and uh, but but you know it was you know I know it weighed heavy on on all of us you know. Yeah, we back in in eighty seven we had one of our teammates. He died. Paul Amato died from from some form of leukemia. And so at least my team can can relate a little bit about that. Yeah. And it can either divide a team or it can bring a team yeah. together. And there's a few more Commodores who've come on, Darren. I want to welcome one of my teammates, Mark Stump Johnson. Hey, Mark, it's been too long, but I hadn't seen you in a while. Mm-hmm. Greg Simmons, we got Tyler Unzicker. And of course, guys, we've got Darren Rothenberg, number 77, Roth out of Knox County. I, and I'll say it again, we <laughs> stole him out of Knox County. Yeah. Oh, I love it. I mean, you know, you know, I love it when I'm here and, and uh, you know, it, it's, um, you know, where I work, you know, it's funny. I came to work uh, at a, at a alcohol distributor in, in Knoxville, B&T distributing. And the, the gentleman that started the, or that not started, but the, the family that had owned it previous to the current ownership was Emil Petroni. And apparently he played at Vanderbilt. And I didn't know that until I worked there. Uh, so I need to go back and look and see if I can find him in the you know archives over there or something but it was it must have been in the you know in the 40s oh wow wow that'd be that'd be but, uh, but there's a few vandy fans. i love seeing the vandy fans out here they got you know they have something on the car or their sweatshirt I, you know it's especially with the baseball you, you know it's there's a lot more wearing you know vandy you know in this area just because of the baseball so well sure with two national titles and of two other appearances in the finals and you know UT has their one big year and then anyway they'll they'll slink back to where they came from soon enough oh yeah Darren what was your welcome to the SEC football moment for you you know it was probably um John Bradley we we do these we did these drills it was just I mean we we line up Linebacker would be, I feel like, 10 yards away, and it would just be blow the whistle, and you'd run into each other as hard as you could, you know, try to knock, you know, it was dumb. I mean, I'm like, what is this doing? Yeah. And I just remember John Bradley, boy, he could, you know, he could he could hit. And uh, I just remember hitting him, thinking, no, oh, I'm going to run right through, you know, it was probably one of the first drills that we did against, you know, against a linebacker like that. And mm-hmm. and it, uh, you know, it woke me up to what was, what was going Sometimes on. Sometimes a little truck can surprise you. That's true. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of a hard hitter, we got Ed Parrish in the house. Hey, Ed, thank you, bud, for coming on. And Keystone Cop, Billy Smith. Man, you're getting all kind of love tonight, Darren. So glad all these guys are rolling through. And as a side note, we are 32 days from kickoff in Hawaii. So you guys better get ready. And I know of seven, at least seven former players and cheerleaders who are going to be out in Hawaii in person. So I know that yeah, I've got uh, some teammates that are going trying to get me to go out there, but with the with the kids and with work, it's just uh, I couldn't make it happen. But I would have loved to. Well, you need we need to talk after, offline because I need to get their names. Okay. Tim Olstead says, "What's up, Rob?" There you go. Hey, Tim, thank you for He's joining us guy. tonight. I need to get you on the show, bud. Darren, you, you and 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 <laughs> your button heads and. Clearly, you're of the size and the strength 
But it's not just about that playing O line in the SEC. You got to have good feet. You got to have good instincts. But I want you to talk about a little bit of communication amongst your O line brethren, either breaking the huddle. I don't know if you guys huddled back then. Yeah. Or as you're walking to the line. And what I've always thought was great, you know, you're, you're watching the linemen point as they're walking, mainly the center, I guess, walking up there. The average fan in the stands is like, why is he telling him he's getting ready to go hit this, the guy he's pointing to? Yeah. So share a little bit about that communication that goes on in those, you know, 10, 15 seconds before the snap. Well, first of all, while I was there, you know, obviously Jim was there my freshman year, great center. And then Jeff Barnett was a brilliant guy and just, you know, really directed the show. And we just kind of fed off what he was, what he would, you know, tell us, you know, as far as, point, you know, pointing out the mic back in the day, just pointing out, you know, where to start your count or who the mic was or, you know, um, kind of just started our blocking, our blocking scheme back then. And, and, you know, that was the hard part because it changed every year. I felt like we had a new, you know, we had a different coach. I feel like every year. So we never got really comfortable with anything and, um, but you know, it was, um, but yeah, it, it was just, you know, uh, making sure that your part, you know, whoever's next, you knew what was going on, what you were doing and what you were expecting, whether you, you know, um, it was me and Brian Gruber talking about a, a twist or a game that it was going to, going to happen in front of us or, you know, linebacker blitzing or, you know, um, you know, so it was just, you know, identifying those things and communicating before the snap, you know, getting your reads and, letting letting you know the center call the the defense and then you know you get even if no matter what he called you just ran the play based on what he called whether it was right or wrong you know so everybody was on the same page you're gonna mess up at least everybody's doing it 100 percent and doing it you know the same way so now look I, I don't want to assume whether folks are watching this live or more folks will be watching it later who are not part of our group you said some college upper level Football speak, we need to break down for just a second. <laughs> All right. Find the mic and start the count. What does that mean? Well, you want to identify, you know, every every offense is different in the way that they, you know, you know, block, their blocking schemes, whether it's zone or, you know, so it just depending on what, you know, we, you know, what we were running. But, you know, when we were to identify the mic, that was just telling us, you know, who basically the center had, you know, mm -hmm. um, and so – you know, if you knew which one he had, then you counted off of him, whether it was, you know, it was a, you know, a 40 front or a 50 front, or they came down to a, a, a bare front where everybody's covered on the inside. And, you know, then you still had two linebackers up and, you, you know, everybody would just pinch down. I mean, there's, you know, I feel like I, I haven't talked about it in 20 years. It's hard to even, <laughs> there's so much, but. Um, there, you know what, I, I need to have a group of linemen on a show that we call it football for dummies. Yeah. So you guys can just break it all down. Mike means middle linebacker. Will means weak side. Exactly. Anyway, we'll, we'll move on from there. But, I, ooh, another toughie. One of my teammates, Dante Ferguson, is in the house. Good to see you, Tay. Thanks for coming on earlier with me and showing up tonight. I'm talking with Roth, Darren Rothenberg. Darren, I want to talk about how hard were the practices in high school versus the practices your first year or two at Vanderbilt? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, there was a big difference. Um, I mean, practice was hard, but, you know, uh, your comp my competition every day in practice wasn't, you know, I was going against every day in practice in, you know, in college. So it was obviously, you know, different, you know, after the effort you had to give, you know, on a, on a, you know, every single play was different than, you know, blocking a, you know, a, you know, 5'10", 175 pound defensive lineman that was playing on the scout team in high school, you know, so, right. you know, it was just, it was just different, but, you know, I was happy that they discontinued because I had heard, you know, horror stories about bell buckle and all that. And, <laughs> and, and I was happy with that. My, I think my year was the first year they didn't go there. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm kind of happy that I didn't have to go through that. Yeah. The uh, classes of 92, three, four, and five say that the class of 96 was kind of weak, kind of wimpy from that standpoint. I'm just, yeah. Saying what I've heard. I, yeah. I'm just telling you what I heard. Um, yeah. Let's, <laughs> who'd you have to butt heads against in practice besides Jamie Winborn and the likes of those Sunday fellas? Oh, I mean, golly. I mean, Ryan Alds, 
you know, I got to play against Ryan and Elliot in the playoffs in high school the year before. And Ryan was a different guy then. He was about 100 pounds heavier when I played against him in high school than when he came to, to Vandy. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but, you know, golly, uh, the, uh, Byron de Graffin Reed, uh, um, you know, golly there, I mean, Jason Smith, um, playing D line Fonzo, you know, I mean, Man, uh, you're, you're naming off some athletic talent right there. Oh yeah. Wow. Yeah. Russ Nicole. I mean, he was, mm-hmm. he, you know, there was, a. There was a ton of talent out there. Delon Shuck that was on last week. I mean, golly, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, so um, I had my hand. That was the thing. I mean, you knew, you know, in practice, you're going against the best in the S. You know, best defenses in the SEC when I was there. So, you know, it was, uh, you know, you, you hoped it would, you know, get you better. You know, you know, and uh, you know, do those things. You know, I had an opportunity. That was, you know, uh, as a true freshman, um, you know, I was. I'd worked my way. It was some things that happened with some of the, with, I think one of the linemen and got hurt. And I was, I was supposed to start that Notre Dame game before I got hurt Mm -hmm. in in practice, like the week before, you know, and, um, but it was, it was just because of, you know, I got, you know, introduced to great players from an early, you know, right there from the get go, you know, in practice. So. Well, Darren, we've got the pride of Pensauk in New Jersey. Mean Gene Keenan is with us. He's in the house. Gene was one of my teammates, one of my buddies back in the day. Gene, it's been a long time, buddy. I definitely want to get you on the show. Darren, the games on Saturdays, depending on if you were playing at Notre Dame or at home, every one of the games were against big schools. When you go on the road, it's hostile environments. Sometimes at home, it's hostile and not the right way. But did you ever, did it ever even phase your game, your mindset, wherever you were playing, whether it was home or, or away, did any of the crowd ever impact, you know, get in here, whether it was pregame or, or during the game? Um, I'll tell you, the, the one time that I remember, the first experience that really kind of, kind of woke me up to what was going on, we were going, we were playing LSU at LSU. And I don't think I was, I was, I was playing much, but I remember being on the trip and we were rolling in. We had made them wear their home jerseys mm-hmm. for whatever reason. We, we thought, you know, we didn't have a tough enough job. Let's really make them upset and make them wear the jerseys they don't want to wear. Right. So we, we roll in on the bus. And I just remember the fans, there must have been, I don't know, 50, 100 people just mooning us as we pulled in the bus into the. <laughs> Into the, just mooning on campus and into the stadium, and then we go in there and the and the you know they were, it's a night game and the 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 the, the um, student section I mean they're right on you there it was a great experience but it was uh, it was a hostile place for sure that kind of was the first time that I was like this is different you know wow did they still have the live Mike the Tiger on site gosh I don't recall. I want to say it would have been outside the stadium, but I don't know if they still continued that into the late nineties, but you're right. That's gotta be one of the more hostile uh, college yeah, atmospheres. Was, was, especially them them off and, I mean, they were just all over us and you know, mm-hmm. it was nuts. Well, when you weren't on the field with other like sized guys and you're in the classroom or you're on campus, it's hard to blend in in a school like Vanderbilt, so small in numbers. I mean, I hate to say it, but traditionally the, the average student is coming from a high socioeconomic background if they're not their own academic merit. And, and frankly, I think historically, there's been some animosity between fraternities and, and sports for whatever the reasons, a lot of rivalries. Mm-hmm. How did you deal with you know, being a big dude in stature and being in class or strolling, you know, on campus and stuff, did that ever, was it ever an issue with you? I, I, and I suspect maybe you had other athletes in your classes, but did that ever rise to, to an issue for you? No, it never, it never did. I mean, I, you know, I, I still felt like, I mean, I got into the school, you know, I was, I felt, you know, like I was, I belonged. No, no, um, I, and I, I don't mean I don't mean from an academic standpoint. Yeah. I just well, mean from a you didn't social. you know big guys don't blend 
in. Yeah, with yeah well, size we don't. Uh, Go ahead. Yeah, we don't, and we're and we're smelly, and we're you know we were the you know we're the hogs. I mean, that's what it's all about, you know. Yeah. So we, you know, um, you know, we were we, you know we went in our shorts or sweats, and you know, um, you know, we we took pride in that. You know, we took pride in the fact that we were you know <laughs> a little different, you know. So. Um, but no, we always got along and, and, uh, the, you know, we had some, I had some teammates in my class that, that, that pledged fraternity. So we always, we got along with the fraternities when I was there for the most part too. And, mm-hmm. you know, could, you know, interact with them and, and do, you know, so it was, you know, it was, um, you know, it was a great experience with those students, with, with the other students, with the regular students, especially, you know, a great, you know, friends still that were, you know, not students that we had, you know, shared you know dorms floors or you know space together or in classes you know that kind of thing so well i'm I'm glad to hear that particularly with fraternities my senior year there was an all-out brawl between football and basketball against maybe pike i I can't remember the fraternity it was it was horrible but anyway that was just maybe that was just unique to my team at, at the time darren what was what was the, the, the best of experiences for you as a Vanderbilt football player at the time? Hmm. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I don't know that there's any one, I mean, any one thing that's like the best, I mean, there's just, I mean, the best time was just being in the, in the locker room with everybody you know, and cutting it up and, you know, hearing the stories that, that Chuck told last week. And I can, you know, can, I can still, you know, be on the lookout for Clay Condry coming around the corner, you know, in the locker, you, you know, with the things he would do or, you know. You can know, I so. tell you to a man how many have said the, the locker room camaraderie, the dynamics within the teamwork, that's what's been most important to so many. Yeah. How many, how many of your teammates do you have in a group text or in your phone that you regularly or semi-regularly communicate with? I suspect there's yeah. some. And probably not enough. I mean, probably more, we need more. You know, we probably need to all just put our phone number somewhere so we can do it. You know, we've, you know, since we've lost, you know, touch over the years or maybe not, but, but, you know, there's not, not a day I goes by. I don't think of a story or something that happened with one of them you know, every day, you know, something will remind me of, you know, of what, what went on in the locker room or, you know, just, you know, that, that interaction and, um, you know, my teammates, you know, it was, it was great. You know, we, like I said, went through a lot together and, and, you know, you know, I think we were all ready at the end to kind of go off on our, own, you know, kind of you know, get away for a little while. Yeah. Um, yeah. It happens sometimes, but, you know, but, the, but always, you always come back, you know, where home is and, and it's always great when you run into, I love coming back to games and running into to, to, to old teammates and, and seeing them and, you know, who, laughing who about did, the. Who was in charge of music back in the day? It wasn't me. <laughs> um, you know, I don't, golly, it was, somebody needs to chime in and, and, and well, let me know. Let me throw it to you this way, way here. Was, might have been T. Hogan. I don't know. I mean, it was. That's a great question. I don't. I don't even know who who was. Well, do you do you remember hearing more country and western, more rock, oh, no. more rap? What was the? It was. Uh, it was probably a, a little of everything. It was probably more, you know, probably more rap than anything, though. Mm-hmm. Was anybody in the in the the on the team during those years considered a, a class? I mean, not a class, but a cut up or a jokester or a funny guy. Oh yeah, there was a there was a ton. I mean, um, like I said, uh, Clay. I mean, Clay remind just because of all the stuff he did with doing the locker room to the to the younger players. <laughs> um, you know, but that's important. It, oh, absolutely. It, it keeps it. It creates a camaraderie if it's not overboard, <laughs> and then, then, then then maybe you have a problem. But it keeps the team loose. At times, oh, yeah. and then you try to do it to the next class that comes in. I mean, it's Absolutely. all you know. It's, you know it, was, it was all it was nothing that harmed anybody. It was all just in fun and you know, just good times. But uh, nobody ever. I didn't know. I've never heard of that story about somebody drinking out of that out of the knee pad. That, that's, uh, that was a classic right there, wasn't it? Wow! wow. <laughs> I suspect 
there's another version, an adult version of that that yeah. didn't make it to the conversation, but we <laughs> maybe we can revisit that sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, Darren, when you weren't doing schoolwork, where, where would you guys get away to that was a, a getaway spot in town or did you go out of town? Did, what would you guys do to, to kind of let your hair down at the time? You know, it was, you know, it was, um, I don't, you know, I, it, we didn't go out much. I, you know, my group that I hung out with, we didn't go out much. I mean, it was, uh, you know, we, we would find something, you know, go to somebody's house or their dorm room or their, you know, their, you know, off off campus house and just, just hang just out. Just get and, together and hang yeah, out. Just, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had, you know, I think my senior year was me and Joel Robb and Todd Yoder. Um, and, you know, everybody was kind of doing their own things and, you know, but we'd all, you know, it was, we might go to like exit in or something like that or somewhere over there, you know, not, not too far from campus. Uh, there was a little, I can't remember what the name of it was, a little beer place right across from where the cooker was from, uh, you know, where Jay Alexander's is now by the McDonald's. There was some little beer joint. What, there. That's where Jonesy's was it? It could have been. I don't remember the name. And then we sure. we had Bandito's that was right across the street from the Towers, but I think it closed by the time you came through. Yeah, no, there was just a little beer joint across. You know, they had a pool table, and it was it was a uh, ah for sure. Russ got Russ has the name of it. Springhouse. Springhouse. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sure Russ would know. <laughs> <laughs> well, Darren, I, I always like to learn. You know, you, you play out your years, you graduate, now it's time to, to move on. But you got a little taste of professional football for a little while. Yeah, but you know, I it wasn't about out of my system. And playing. It wasn't out of my system yet. Um, you know, I wanted to try uh, to, to just, you know, continue. If I could, you know, make, if I could live a little bit without, you know, without really working and playing football, I would do it, you know. So, um, yeah, there's a team, uh, the Thundercats here in Knoxville that I played uh, professionally for um, and had uh, actually uh, Tavares joined us for a few weeks, I think one season, mm -hmm. um, you know, so it was great to reconnect with him. But it was a bunch of Tennessee guys and, and Midwest guys. We had some guy. we had, believe it or not, the leading tackler from Oklahoma was on our team. Um, we did had you get, some running did you get drafted or was it a territorial well, thing? There was a lot of guys that had been in the league that had got, you know, that, mm -hmm. you know, found their way out of the league someone in one way or another, but had, you know, but, but, but we're good guys. And, and uh, we had a great, we had a great team, won the championship that year. Um, you know, uh, we had a great, had a great experience. It was a lot of fun. I mean, it was, it was, it was a lot of fun. I had a place to stay food, you know, a little money in my pocket and, uh, and just had a lot of fun just continuing with, you know, having, you know, just having fun and, and playing oh, football. that's cool. You got to, you got to keep playing a sport you love and yeah. you actually got paid for it for a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. But then, but then you knew it was time. It was, it was time to move on. It was time that's to hang right. up the cleats. And was that a, was that a bittersweet day? Was it a hard day for you? Was it kind of, you, you knew it was, it was time. Well, I knew there wasn't any opportunity anymore. I mean, at some point you're, you know, you keep trying to knock down doors and, and find ways to, you know, to, to get opportunities. Um, but, uh, you know, yeah, I knew and, and, and I was ready. I mean, I had, you know, I had a great education. I was ready to go out and, and, and do those things, you know, um, my body was, you know, beaten up and enough, I mean, you know, you know, I had, too many injuries to, you know, to talk about and, you know, uh, you know, paying for it all now, but it was a blast, you know, but, and, yeah, and I, in the real world. And, <laughs> and uh, at some point we have to put away the games, yeah. uh, but I meant to, I meant to ask you earlier and I for, apologize for going back. Yeah. Your two head coaches at Vanderbilt were complete opposite ends of the spectrum personality wise. Yes. You had Dow, you had Dow Hauer for one year, I believe. Mm -hmm. And you had Coach Woody, the rest. Coach Woody, of course, came from Pittsburgh. He's well known for steel curtain, the defense, and all of that. But you're on the offense. So I've got really two questions to ask you about that. Okay. Can you kind of compare the, the, you know, you get recruited by one staff, but then now you're playing for a completely different staff. Did that second, the Coach Woody staff treat you guys differently, in your opinion? 
because you weren't their recruits. That's my first. Yeah, I don't think, you know, Woody was there. I don't think Woody, I, don't, I didn't get that from Woody at all. Uh, you know, I had three offensive line. Well, you know, if you count Rennie Simmons, who recruited, was part of the recruiting me, mm-hmm. you know, had four offensive line coaches. Yeah. You know, so I definitely feel like that was a part of it later. But, you know, you just, you know, hey, it's, it's, that's what, I mean, it's a big boy game and that's what happens, you know. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, you're looking back, you understand it. It was frustration back during that time. But, you know, I had a lot of control over things that I didn't, th- you know, didn't realize I had control over too. I mean, there's a lot of things that, you know, I could have, uh, you know, I probably would have attacked differently, you know, um, looking back on it, you know, just maturity. But I mean, it's just maturity and, and understanding those things. And if you, if you know, how you handle it is, is all, you know, I think is, is everything. I mean, and, you know, but you're, there's no one there telling you how to handle it, you know? Well, you um, know, you're so right because most of us come in, we're 18 year old knuckleheads. We've been told how great we were coming out of high school, the accolades and the awards and the recognitions, but it's the rare athlete that comes to college and plays in the SEC immediately starts and is and then produces the way that they're expected. The rest of us are finding our way. A lot of us get redshirted, and you really need that time of maturity physically, mentally, spiritually, sure. academically. But by the time you come out on the other end, you know, you're now the wise old man of 22 or 23, but frankly, you've learned a lot just from your experience. And in I mean, would, would that be fair to, to oh, place sure. your experience as well? Absolutely. I mean, I use examples of my time, you know, there with, you know, teammates I have now, as far as in my, in my work, we call them, you know, we call them teammates, but I have team, you know, guys that work with me that, you know, I tell, you know, Hey, this is reminds me of the situation. You know, I wasn't able to, you know, to see the, 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 the reality at the time, but this is how, you know, this is how I think, you know, you should look at it at, at handling this challenge that's ahead of you or whatnot, you know, whatever it is. But yeah, I mean, all those experiences make you who you are and, and prepare you for success, really. I mean, everything, you know, you know, I, I, you know, it's kind of, you know, nothing prepares you for sales, you know, like, you know, you hear no a lot, you know, and yeah. um, and you got to be able to overcome that and let it roll off your back. And, and, and I think, you know, Van, you know, I, I would have loved to have won a lot more games, but you know, learning how to, to stay positive and to come back every day and uh, give your effort, you know, uh, to overcome and, and to get, you just improve yourself, you know, so. Well, you know, you've got two athletes that you're raising at home. And I, do you incorporate some of those lessons, maybe some of the lessons from your dad? How do you handle not being coach dad versus just dad? It is hard. It's hard. Um, my, you know, luckily my daughter's involved in, in well, I, I was a swimmer, believe it or not, when I was young, but my daughter's a swimmer and plays volleyball and my son is, he plays everything. Um, he can, um, you know, basketball, baseball, football, but yeah, it's, you know, I coached him last year, one year, his first year of football, I coached cause I wanted to be making sure he was taught at least the, 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 the fundamentals properly. And I wasn't going to have anybody else do it you know, and now, you know, letting him do it, but, you know, they don't want to listen. They don't want to hear it from me anyway. I'd like, I didn't want to hear from my dad really, you know, you want, you know, but you just hope that they're around the right people, you know, that, that, uh, you know, that's the biggest thing is it's not so much what your kids doing, but what what the coaches are doing and making sure they're in an environment that's, that's healthy. Um, that they've got the best interest of the kids that, you know, that's what's important is what, you know, what, what's happening with them and their development and, you know, not not what the scoreboard says necessarily or your stats or anything like that. So, man, that is just so spot on right there. The best thing that I have always thought that I could do for my children who are playing sports or going through dance or whatever their interests are, get them to the right people who have their interests and not their own agenda. But and sometimes it's hard to do. But speaking of agendas, Mr. Harvey says you are the king of the tailgate. And I want to <laughs> pivot. I want to pivot for just a minute. We got the 22 right. season. It'll be here before we know it. We got some yeah. great home games coming up. Are we going to see you in Nashville? Are you going to be tailgating? What's your, what's your plan? Oh right? yeah. I've been coming to tail. I've been coming to game, you know, 
for for, for several years. Had season tickets uh, last year. Got had had I tried the ones down in the the, the loges down there in the end zone, but wasn't excited about the view down there. So I've I've changed my seats for this year. But I got season tickets again, and I'll be at you know every game I can be at. Uh, you know, bar, you know. Luckily, my son's football now in middle school is during the week, so no more Saturday games. So I'm able we'll be able to get to all of them. Um, so I'm excited about that, but, but I tailgate there, um, with, um, uh, one of my supplier partners that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that participates there. Are and, you in uh, Vandyville? Is that where you Yeah, Vandyville there. I think it's, uh, uh, right there, right there at the beginning. I can't, uh, I think it's, I think it's Dredge. Dredge. And I've seen you at the gridiron or the black and gold club tailgate inside mm -hmm. the fence. Oh, we got some more love coming your way, Darren. T. Hogan's Tavares says, big there fella is. classmate, he needs a chest bump. Mark, Matlock, right. Mark Matlock is in the house. Thank you, fellas. Thank you for showing up tonight for Darren. And we've got a few more minutes, but but you know, you, I want to tell a story because there was one story that I want to see if everybody remembers. Okay. And it, or if the folks that are on here, but you were talking about the differences between Dow Howard and Woody. And I remember the one of the, the first, my first, when I, you want to talk about my aha moment was, was kind of this, you know, we were in, it was, our, I think the first meeting right when spring, when two days were starting and Dow Howard got this overhead projector. And he put the schedule up there and we're all sitting in there and all freshmen we're, we're, I mean, we're excited. We we're ready to go out there and, and, you know, beat the world, you know, and he goes through that checklist of games and, and just goes through there and says, uh, we got no chance in this one. Let's try not to get embarrassed here. Let's we, we'll, we got a chance to win this or just, and I'm thinking to myself and I, I don't know if anybody else remember, I just was like, what have I gotten myself into? I, I wouldn't go into. I don't care if you're going to lose or not, but you go into every game thinking you're going to win. I mean, that was that was nuts. It it I I remember hearing some. I don't remember where it was from. You're not the first person I've heard that from. But I want to compare that, and I'm not trying to dump on Coach Dowhauer. No, no, not at all. But listen to what Coach Lee had to say this week in SEC yeah. Media Days. Give me, give me that all day Absolutely. long, all Absolutely. day long. And you go in and you create a mentality of your team, whether it's the reality or not, you're creating a mentality of success. Yeah. And not to get too deep into this, give me what Coach Lee is saying all day. Absolutely. Russ, and, you know, I'm in Knoxville, right? And I've got to listen to it. I mean, you, you, I mean, the, the chatter after that, those comments here in Tennessee, in Knoxville, was just mm -hmm. unbearable. But I would, the people that would say it to my father, I'd say, okay, so are we the best school in the SEC? Yes. All right. Are we building the best facilities? We're about, you know, we're putting three hundred million dollars into the facility. We're going to have the best facilities. Yes. Mm -hmm. So why can't it be the best program, best city in, in in the SEC? Yes. So those three are true. What makes you think that fourth isn't possible? I, I still believe it is. Absolutely, you know, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Russ says worst speech ever. Talking about Coach <laughs> Dowhauer, yeah. Woody had a meltdown when y'all broke into offense and defensive units. Oh man, I wish I wish I could have been for, been there for that one. North yeah. Texas State Dowhauer got a flag before the game even started. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, Billy Smith. I, you know. Oh, yeah, we got hey, Mr. I, Mr. Knee Pad himself. Mr. Kneepad oh, gotcha. himself is in the house. Hey, Shook, it's right. good. Shook Nasty has joined right. us. But Darren, it, it's, I love the mental approach by Coach Lee and building the culture from within, because if you don't have that, then, then you don't have a chance. And I just, I don't know if you see that in the Knoxville East part of the state yet, but I suspect you're going to see it on Saturdays on campus. I'm looking but, forward to it. Yeah. I mean, that's what, I mean, it's all about, you know, being positive and um, I, I love, I, I love the direction of the program. I got to, you know, I got to go and spend some time over there, brought, brought my son, let the, 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 for his first year, I mean, 
let us come down on the field practice. Got you know, my son got to meet him. I mean, you know, just just been just been great. You know, we don't we overlap. We didn't overlap. He came in a year after I left, I believe. But um, you know, a lot of my friends that were there over that time just you know rave about him, and you know, I'm excited for the for the future. Well, you know, Coach also has a full appreciation for the program's history and the people who came before him and, and after him. And that's what I appreciate about him as, as yeah. well. Darren, my friend, I, I can't appreciate, can't thank you enough how much I appreciate you spending a little time. I do look forward to seeing you this fall. Stick with me for just a minute before we get out of there. Let's see. Oh, <laughs> Russ says, you're, you're right, Russ. It hadn't been that long ago that we were beating Georgia fairly consistently. If they can move to a top tier in, in three years, hopefully we can as, as well. I think we got more hurdles than the state schools for many reasons, but we'll save that for, for another day. But, Russ, I, I like your thinking as well. Guys, 32 days before we kick off in Hawaii. We've got a whole bunch more Commodores coming up in the upcoming weeks, including father and son crop david and his dad coached and played at vanderbilt so it's uh, i love getting the multi-generation commodores oh, yeah. together but darren bud thank you for spending some time with me tonight some fun stories and just thank you for your support and all that you do toward commodore nation absolutely i encourage everybody to get on i'll, I'll tune in for every, you know to anybody and everybody it's just great to, to learn everybody that's been through the program and and uh just uh, it's been it's been i'm just Thank you for doing this. You know, it's great. My, my pleasure. Guys, y'all be safe. Continue to, to do the right things by you and your family. Anchor down.